Welcome viewers to Historical Journeys. The enormous lake flickers underneath the sun, cutting an unmistakable region across another insightful rich wetland, exactly a long time back. Here, another species Homo sapiens has accumulated. These cutting-edge people have advanced from their Neanderthal precursors, and humanity has finally begun its rule. However, researchers have quite recently found this astonishing spot where everything started. Researchers say they've pinpointed where each human came from. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It only takes a second, and you won't miss any of our future videos. Let's get started. In fact, a study led by geneticist Vanessa Hayes of the Garvin Institute of Medical Research in Sydney used specific scientific data to identify this particular verdant region. Particularly, Hayes and her team had to rely on mitochondrial DNA they had gathered from 1217 sample cells. With the right DNA data assembled and broke down, the exploration group featured an overall area of beginning. What's more, after that came further archaeological and geographical exploration that thus helped Hayes and CO to track down something staggering proof of an enormous old lake that separated into wetlands. Its rich vegetation was the scenery for the main people to walk the earth, they say, and its advanced area may simply shock you. Naturally, experts have held the belief for a very long time that humankind can be traced all the way back to the African continent. However, mapping evolutions and migrations has been, to put it mildly, a challenging endeavor. As a matter of fact, whole species might have traveled every which way without passing on a follow for specialists to reveal today. However, the image of humanity's genealogical roots becomes more clear as researchers draw closer to the current day. They know, for instance, that Neanderthals wandered Europe and, surprisingly, journeyed into Siberia and Focal Asia, albeit not to the extent that Africa. Be that as it may, while this populace might have prepared for current people, they didn't really start the species. Furthermore, these new people introduced different slight contrasts that isolated them from any semblance of the Neanderthal populace who wandered the mainland before them. Moreover, present-day people excelled at making devices such that Neanderthals hadn't. In any case, the way that both the Homo sapiens and Neanderthal populaces had comparable ways of life did at first bewilder cutting-edge specialists. Then there is a solitary beginning idea known as the out-of-Africa hypothesis. This theory asserts, as the name suggests, that modern humans originated on the continent and lived there for millennia before moving to other parts of the world. Furthermore, during the 1980s, Researchers appear to have accumulated what had all the earmarks of being a reasonable affirmation of the out-of-Africa hypothesis. As far as deciding humanity's tribal roots, however, researchers could utilizing these apparatuses to dissect the hereditary data of current populaces. From that point, they followed numerous subjects' heredities back into the far-off past, and these mappings apparently consistently drove specialists to one spot of beginning. In these unique examinations, two specialists depended on mitochondrial DNA while following their subjects' familial heredities. So it's simpler to follow how transformations have passed from moms to kids for ages than truth, in over and again following the strategy chondral DNA back the entire way to the support of progress. Specialists understand that one lady's hereditary code has been helped through to everybody on Earth today. She isn't considered as the very first human lady on Earth, all things considered. Rather, this Eve lived when the whole human populace comprised of a simple 10,000 individuals. She coincidentally had a solid line of girls who passed her mitochondrial DNA onto their child young ladies and down through the ages directly through to the current day. Furthermore, the researchers behind the concentrate additionally presumed that Eve had begun in Africa, all the more explicitly the eastern region of the mainland. Cheat's DNA appeared to uncover the beginning of mankind's story. However, the specialists had bunches of different inquiries that assuming the species started in Africa. For example, how could they fan out to different landmasses? Around then, then current people apparently left their African starting points for Asia. Although they had already settled in Australia, Indonesia, 
and Papua New Guinea by about 45,000 years ago. Vans left Africa for Europe 5,000 years later. People who traveled from Africa to Europe probably took one of two pathways to get north. Their radicals likewise drove Neanderthals into a couple of precipitous regions until the species vanished out and out around quite a while back. This occurred around quite a while back and really started in Asia. Given the changes that have taken place on the African continent, where humankind is said to have originated today, it is especially surprising that all of this information comes with little fossil evidence of the first humans who started at all. It is hard to believe that all of this information comes with little fossil evidence. In point of fact, the dry terrain makes it easy for the bones of people who died there centuries ago to erode away. But regardless of whether archaeologists dig in Africa or Europe, they rarely find the remains of the earliest Homo sapiens. In any case, the specialists accept that the primary people perhaps didn't cover their dead like the Neanderthals, picking rather to incinerate them or pass on them to deteriorate out in the open. Notwithstanding this absence of skeletal remaining parts, however, current science and innovation have permitted analysts to pinpoint human starting points. Yet again, indeed, a recent report held by geneticist Vanessa Hayes of the Garvin Organization of Clinical Exploration in Sydney depended on mitochondrial DNA for replies. As recently referenced, Hayes and her group accumulated 12 17-center chondral DNA tests from individuals who as of now live in Southern Africa. Hayes and the group followed what's known as the Zero Lira ancestry in the subject's mitochondrial DNA. The Zero Lira ancestry goes as far as possible back to Eve humanity's normal predecessor. Over the long run, then, at that point, Eve's unique DNA split into five primary branches as individuals left Africa and differentiated. The Zero Lyra Middle Chondral DNA started somewhere, and Hayes and her team were able to pinpoint precisely where generally they found that Zero Layer of and all of its sub-branches once again placed the earliest humans in Africa. While some people followed this greenery to the southwest, others moved to the northeast to become farmers and foragers. And keeping in mind that a portion of the areas of interest might appear to be dreadful in the cutting-edge period, the data gathered about this likely place of human beginning showed that it used to look totally different. The monstrous lake Makiatakiri, generally the size of New Zealand, once covered a tremendous wraps of current Botswana around a long time back. However, it began to change from a lake into a wetland. What's more, as per Hayes and her group, this damp scope was the support of current humanity. Taking a gander at the district today, notwithstanding, it's difficult to accept that the starting points of human existence on Earth might have developed from this parched region. But Hayes says that 200,000 years ago, the area looked very different, and the place where the salt pans were harsh was a wetland full of resources. At that point, Hayes says the Botswana-based wetland would have filled in as a desert spring for the dry region encompassing it. Yet, it's accepted that a change in environment ultimately pushed the establishing people from the wetlands as the world circle until moved as a matter of fact, it carried downpour to new stretches of African land. This was a forerunner to their incredible worldwide relocation, which started around 60,000 to quite a while back, basically, then, at that point. Hayes and her group repeated the long-held beginning of humanity's foundations, yet they pinpointed the spot as a wetland in Botswana. Fogg said we have known for quite a while that cutting-edge people started in Africa approximately a long time back, yet what we hadn't known until this study was where precisely not all specialists felt persuaded by Hayes' exploration. In any case, Chris Stringer, a specialist in human starting points at London's regular History Historical Center conceded that cutting-edge DNA tests probably won't be altogether illustrative of the past. He made sense of, I'm most certainly careful about utilizing present-day hereditary dispersions to deduce precisely where genealogical populaces were residing a long time back, especially in a landmass as enormous and mind-boggling as Africa. Stringer likewise felt that Hayes and her group had been excessively dependent on the center chondral DNA and zero lira ancestry as the fundamental calculate their examination. 
He forewarned like such countless examinations that focus on the slightest bit of the genome, or one area, or one stone instrument industry, or one basic fossil. It can't catch the full intricacy of our mosaic beginnings once different information is thought of. Another study also found that Africans who move to other countries carry genomes that can be traced back to the eastern regions of the continent. Stringer closed these and numerous different information, recommends that we are a combination of family from various districts of Africa with, obviously, the expansion of interbreeding from other human gatherings outside the mainland. He told BBC News, you can utilize present-day metachondral conveyances all alone to remake a solitary area for current human beginnings. I believe it's overextending the information since you're just taking a gander at one little piece of the genome, so it can't provide you with the entire story of our starting points. By the by, Hayes' review pinpointed one likely beginning for mankind, and numerous specialists have long accepted that the species did without a doubt develop in Africa. Until further notice, however, we can consider life as it might have been quite a while back with this season's virus, first people tracking down their direction in a Botswana wetland. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay updated with our latest videos, subscribing is the way to go. Just click that red button below and become a part of our channel family.